focus on your character because that's who you truly are and your reputation is merely what people think of you. You gotta get clear on your purpose. Work shouldn't be something that you dread. Work should be something that you love because you love doing it. There he is, Mr. Gerard yeah. Adams. How we doing, man? What's up, Evan? How you doing? How you feeling? I'm great. I appreciate you, you taking the time to join me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm newer into your world, into the stuff that you're putting out. Um, I'm a fan of, of the work that you're doing. Your whole concept of that leaders create other leaders. Yeah. And it not just being the show that you put on, but also make it into a movement that you want to spread. For, yeah. for the people who may not be as familiar with what that's all about, like what is Leaders Create Leaders and why is it so important to you? Yeah, uh, well, thank you for, you know, thank you for those kind words. Um, it's definitely something that is deeply, deeply important to me. Um, I kind of grew up never really truly owning my story, um, never really used social media, never thought about creating a movement. I was more just like your behind the scenes entrepreneur. And my father, though, like raised me always talking about leadership. I was, I was blessed to kind of at a young age have my father inspire me, giving me quotes, leaving them around the house from like Marcus Aurelius, John F. Kennedy, um, MLK, just like just all types of different leaders. And, and so at a young age, like I, I kind of started learning about what it meant to be truly a leader. Um, and I grew up just like always wanting to you know, go against the grain and um, truly like take ownership of my own life, you know, and, and build a life of, of true success to give back to my family. And, um, but again, I never, I never really had the confidence. I led teams as an entrepreneur, but I never really truly created a movement around my story. And when I did, sold my company in 2015, I was looking at the social media landscape, especially around entrepreneurship. And I started just seeing a lot of entrepreneurs that were portraying, you know, um, not what I felt was what it really, really truly meant to be a leader, what it really truly meant to be an entrepreneur. And it was more of like kind of just, you know, renting Lamborghinis and showcasing a lifestyle to kind of sell courses and get rich quick. And I was just like, you know, I really want to start stepping up as a role model to show people what it really means to me. yourself but be able to genuinely care to make an impact in other people's lives and um, what it truly takes to actually become successful because I had gone through a lot of failures in my life I had gone through getting knocked down to my knees so many different times having to continue to persevere and be resilient through all the ups and downs as as most entrepreneurs really you know most entrepreneurs really go through so for me I just started thinking about well how can I differentiate myself if I'm going to use social media as a tool to share stories of, of real leaders and entrepreneurs out there that are creating real impact in the world, solving real world problems. Um, you know, how do I want to go about doing that? So for me, it was like creating a show where, you know, where I can interview different leaders that, uh, and tell their stories of triumph, tell their stories of resilience and what they had to go through. And for me, I just felt like it, it worked because we, we live in a time where every, there's, people are looking for followers. They're using social media, looking for, you know, looking just for the followers and looking to be liked. And that's not what it really truly, you know, a leader is about. Um, so for me, kind of when I thought about that quote, leaders create leaders, not followers. Um, that's kind of something that really hit home for me. So what's the process for a leader to create another leader? I don't think, I think you're right. Like, I think it's a typical mindset of how many followers do I have on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or whatever. What's the process for someone to go to to say, hey, I've learned some stuff. I've been through some wars. I can help other people. How do I become a leader that then can train another leader? Yeah, so I think what it comes down to is like actually taking some time to truly get clarity as to what, you're, you, know, what you want to create in the world. What is the legacy that you want to leave? Um, and like fill your cup up I, for a very, very long time, you know, as an entrepreneur, I kind of didn't really ever think about who, you know, who I was and, and really think about kind of really built like kind of kind of what was important to me. Oh, and I think that for to you, if you want to lead other people, you kind of need to know yourself. You need to kind of think about like what really genuinely is important to you. You need to kind of start mastering your own routine. You know, start to create what, what, is success, what does success even mean for you? A lot of people, they define success 
based on what other people think. So I think if you're going to lead other people, it, it's first leading yourself. A lot of, a lot of times they think it's, it's kind of, um, you know, a, a leader is like this hierarchy where you need to be better than someone else. You need to have some kind of success and tell people kind of what to do. And that's not the, that's not the case. If you want to lead other people, lead your own life. You know what I'm saying? Like lead by example, by living your best life, creating the life of success, what, what that means for you. And a lot of, for, for many entrepreneurs, it's, you know, they don't, they don't really truly do that. They're living a life based on what they feel other people perceive success to be or what other people are, they expect, the expectations that other people put on them. And I know what that's like, because I did that for a very, very long time in my young, as a young entrepreneur. I, I was trying to prove myself to my dad or to prove myself to the world instead of like taking a minute to stop hustling and think about like, all right, what do I actually want to create that's going to make a difference in the world? What are the problems that I genuinely want to solve in the world? And let me start defining what does success really truly mean to me? And when I started doing that and taking a step back and started to like master my own routine and document the process rather than trying to portray any lifestyle, but document the process of me mastering my own life, mastering my own habits, my own mindset, my own beliefs, you know, my own, uh, you know, skills in, and, mm. and actually documenting what it truly meant to build a real business as well. Um, just by doing that alone allows you to truly be inspirational and, 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 and creating other leaders. Um, so I think that's the first step is really finding what I call the leader within and defining what does success look for you, mastering your own mindset, mastering your own belief system, mastering your values, mastering your routine. And then, and therefore now you can start living the life of truly of a leader for yourself. And then I think after that, it really does come down to, um, getting clear on your mission, your vision, and, I think inspiring others, em empowering others, truly understand, helping them become aware of what their gifts are, what their strengths are, what, you know, empowering them to kind of step into their greatness. And for me, I've, my success has been predicated on the team that I've been able to build and all the different companies that I've invested in or that I've built. It's, it's my team. So I got very clear, self-aware, what am I great at doing? And then I started positioning people around me and empowering them, like figuring out what their skills are, what they're great at, putting them in the position to win. If you think about a basketball team, being a great leader is like knowing who to give the people, who to give the ball to at the right time so they can score, you know, and, and building, you know, it's not just one person, but you got to be able to put the right team around you. And then, um, you know, for me, that's, that's what I do is I try to always position the right people, put them, put them in a position where they're, where they, where they can win. You know, where, where I'm empowering them based on what their skill is, based on what their personality traits are, what their, where their gifts are. Um, so, you know, I think that's, you know, for me, that's, um, those are like the two core things that I think that really help you create a, a strong leader. I love it, dude. You mentioned the quotes growing up. Your dad exposed you to a lot of things that a lot of people, a lot of kids growing up don't know Marcus Aurelius, right? And so you had a, you had an interesting childhood growing up. Is, is there a quote that kind of, still sticks in your mind from your dad from the early days? That I remember the concept. The concept is basically like focus on your character because that's who you truly are and your mm. reputation is merely what people think of you. And for me, I, that always kind of really hit home for me because I, I really have focused more on my character on and off the screen, regardless of how many likes and regardless of social media or my show, but just really like really truly having strong character in my life and treating people with respect, treating people with integrity, um, always trying to, to make empower the people around me, no matter, no matter whether it's a billionaire or, or someone who's completely broke, cause we've all, we don't understand struggle. So I've, I've, yeah. I've, for me, that was like the one quote that my father would kind of always say to me. So I'm thinking about confidence. You mentioned at the start, you didn't have the confidence earlier on. Uh, and I know you were bullied growing up and, didn't feel like you necessarily fit in and you were discouraged from sharing your message on social. And then when you became wealthy, your dad says, Hey, don't, don't go telling people about it. So how do you then get the confidence to say, I'm going to kind of ignore all this noise, ignore these people who, who with love are giving me this message. And then I'm going to go off and do it anyway, right? How do you switch the confidence gear on to then say, I'm going to launch a show and I want to help people be leaders. Like where does that transition happen for you? You know, it, it took a really, really long time. Um, I was my, my last Instagram post. I just wrote about it, but I actually, I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years. 
for like 12 of those years, I never used Facebook. I never had a MySpace back in the day. I didn't really use Instagram. I wish I documented more on YouTube starting earlier. And, you know, it took a really, really long time. You know, the, I think that for me, the process was like, what do I, I started really taking the time to reflect as like, what, what is really important to me and like the legacy that I want to leave, leave. And I just realized that ultimately by just starting and just starting to own my story and just starting to share was ultimately going to create the, create more connection with an audience and help me build the relationships. I started thinking about like, you know, all these people that I'm, I'm looking up to in the entrepreneurial, you know, realm, like how, how can I build relationships with them? How can I, how can I build a connection with, with an audience that's similar to me? Cause I want to build more relationships of entrepreneurs that are out there that know what it's like to struggle to want to build a business, to be able to get, create freedom. So for me, it's just like, what's more, what's, what's important to you? Um, and if relationships are important to you, if, if, if creating these kind of relationships and creating a difference in people's lives is important to you, then ultimately you have to, you have to take a shot and you have to realize that just like by being vulnerable and putting your story out there, not everyone is going to like you. And I started realizing that I'm like, what do I have to lose? Ultimately, what do I have to lose? Ultimately, I, I've been in so many boardrooms where people have said no to me, investors that have said no to me my whole life. I've had people had, that have doubted me. So for me, it just got to a point where I was just like, you know, what? I have nothing left to lose. You know, I want to at least know that if, if I don't have tomorrow, if I die tomorrow, that I've done everything that I can to share my story, to leave a little bit of inspiration. I love Tupac's quotes, one of my favorite quotes. And he says that, like, I may not change the world, but I will spark the mind that changes the world. Yeah. And for me, that's how I feel. You know, I just I started saying to myself. This is what's important to me. And, um, you know, ultimately the people that your true friends, you know, your family, the people that really genuinely care about you, they're going to, they're going to accept you truly. And if they don't, then ultimately they're not meant to be, in, they're, they're not meant to be in your life. And sometimes it's hard because your family will doubt you. Your family will try to, you know, they, they'll put their insecurities on you because they haven't chased their own dreams or right? your friends, they'll, they'll judge you. That just comes with the territory. But I think that ultimately there's never been a better time than now. You see it. There's so many unbelievable people that are building personal brands right now that are sharing their story and that are actually creating, you know, creating impact by doing so. So I think that, like, a lot, there, there's proof now. Because when I first became an entrepreneur, there was no proof. It was hard. So I listened to my dad. I listened to my first mentor. I was like, don't ever tell your story. Don't use social media. And for me, it was hard because there wasn't many entrepreneurs that were actually – becoming, you know, social media influencers or personal brands or coaches or any of that. Now you we've paved the way there. You can see the Gary Vaynerchuk's of the world. You know, you see Tom Billu, you see, you know, there's, there's, I can go on and on and on. Mel Robbins, Jay Shetty, a lot of people I've interviewed, um, they paved the way to, 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 to show that like the difference that you can make in people's lives by just sharing your, your story. So I wish I started earlier. And if anyone's watching this live stream and just thinking about it, I think that your story is not good enough or that, you know, who's going to really pay attention. I would tell you, just start now because, you know, if you can, if you really start to do it and you share, it'll naturally, that's how you boost your confidence. You'll naturally, you'll, you'll naturally start to just be yourself. And I think that's the biggest key is just being yourself. Don't overthink. Don't try to script it. Even this interview, like, I'm not trying to over script. I don't have a script. You didn't send me questions before we jumped on here. It's ultimately just about being yourself. I just realized just by you yourself, just telling your story of what the experiences you've gone through, you know what? Like, that in itself is unique. That is original, and, and you're going to connect with people. Not everyone will like you. Not everyone will appreciate you. Not everyone on this live stream will. will they'll still people will judge you. But ultimately, that just, it is what it is. You keep moving forward. If, if Tupac had social media, what do you think he'd use it for? <laughs> Man, I wish Tupac was still on social media. What do I think he would use it for? I think he would, he would, he would use it in a similar fashion of in, inspiring people. He would be documenting, you know, I think he would be really truly looking at what are, the big, what are the issues that are going on in the world and how can he use his influence to help bring light and love on those, on those issues that are going on in the world. There's so many different issues right now. 
a lot of our problems that we think we have are not real problems, right? There's real suffering going on in the world. There's, 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 uh, you know, there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of negativity in the media. The education system is flawed. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, what, you know, big thing for me right now is clean water. that's going on a lot of poverty. And I just think that he would be using his, that's what it means the difference between being like an influencer and influential. And I think mm -hmm. that he would be using his platform to share important stories and to, and to shed light on important issues um, where we can make a difference and, and get involved. Um, so for me, that's, I think being influential is when you're actually able to use your words and actions to actually create a change, a change mm -hmm. in behavior in people. For me, that's what I want to do. I don't want to be an influencer. I want to be an influential leader. I want people to realize that like, my words and my actions will help make a change in their life um, for the better. And uh, that's, that's the reason why I do what I do. Is your goal to shine a light on some of these issues and then train the leaders up to go off and solve them? Yes. Now, for me, the big one is education. I launched a nonprofit in North New Jersey, and I built an incubator in the city. I work with a lot. I'm actually speaking to um, 140 middle school and high school students in another, uh, like, two weeks um, to empower them. I'm teaching them emotional intelligence, financial literacy, entrepreneurship, things that I wish I learned at a younger age. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the education system was built for nine to five. It was built during an industrial, you know, time. It's, it's, it's no longer conducive to this new economy. And for me, I want to be a part of helping evolve it, you know, evolve it and teaching the new skills that are needed for you to succeed in today's economy. So that's something that I'm really passionate about right now. Um, you know, but I, I'll, I'll continue to support many different missions. Talking about using social media, people have a love hate relationship with it. You see a lot of people now uninstalling from their phones and cutting off access. Uh, they consume a lot, maybe not creating as much as they should. As somebody who, it sounds like you were very intentional when you came to social, like you avoided it for a long time. And then when you, yeah. when you joined, you, were, you thought about it, you're careful, you're very intentional. For people who are struggling with it and, and uninstalling it and, and trying to figure out how to use it, use this powerful tool, what advice would you recommend? Um, so I would, ex first I would explain to them that like, it's a tool. You know, the big issue is if you're, you can't, you can't get stuck on social and we all do this, but like, you know, just scrolling and comparing your life. Cause you, you know, you can't compare, compare your chapter two to someone else's chapter 20, you know, mm -hmm. everyone on social started at zero. And, you know, I think that if you're, if you're using it just to be a distraction, from getting clear as to what it is that you want to accomplish in your life and you're scrolling and you're looking at everyone else's life and you're just saying to yourself, that's not for me. Look at that person. They're lucky. And it's just kind of making you, you know, making you become uh, insecure, making you become doubt yourself, making you feel that you're not good enough or not worthy or not that that's, that's, you know, ultimately, you, you know, that's dangerous, but if you can use it as a tool, and realize, like, there's a huge shift, I think, happening around the world where people are waking up and people are starting to realize that, you know what, they, they don't have to work a nine to five. They don't have to. They, they have a deep desire to make a bigger impact in, in the world and that they can genuinely have it all. They can, they can, whatever that means for them. For me, it's traveling the world, making money as I travel the world, documenting traveling the world while building real businesses, while influencing and speaking on stages, inspiring leaders to be able to go out there and own their story, build their brands, become powerful coaches. So ultimately, and, and like I'm living proof, I want to be a reflection to everybody that like you can do it. I didn't go on social media for 12 years. I just started four years ago and now I'm living my dream. Who knew, I never would have thought, I thought my story would never impact people's lives. A young kid from New Jersey, an Hispanic kid, I didn't grow up with, didn't grow up anything handed to me. My parents were middle class. My mom worked at a supermarket her entire life. You know what I mean? Like, who am I to be sharing my story? But you know what? I got out of my comfort zone. And that's the biggest thing is that if you start to do the things that are uncomfortable, the things that are uncertain, the hard thing for you to step up and believe in yourself and start sharing your story and start now and stick it through, you can make a difference on people's lives. You can go out there and build a powerful brand. You can build a business around you. And I'm living proof that you can do that. You know, now I'm living my dream life. You know, I have it all.
you know, millions of dollars, traveling the world. I, my, my, the people I looked up to, like Gary Vaynerchuk, I can text message now. Mel Robbins, I'm in her house. Ed Milet, I'm hanging out in Laguna with him. Jay Shetty, you know, I'm going for walks and meditating with him. Um, Will Smith, you know, spending time with him. So it's like, if I'm able to do it and I'm a, I was a kid from Jersey that didn't have anything handed to him, then, then you can too. And there's no reason why you shouldn't start now. How do leaders stay consistent? I mean, for someone who's watching this or listening to your show and they get pumped up and it's like, man, this guy's speaking truth. Yes, I'm gonna share my story and they create a piece of content, but then they wake up the next day and that energy or that momentum is kind of gone. You know, the, the Gerard Adams momentum that they faced, you know, <laughs> that you hit them in the face with is now kind of passed. I think a lot of people go through that. Like they have these moments of boldness and then they fall back down to where they were. How do you, how do you instruct leaders to maintain their momentum and consistency? Yeah, that really comes down to routine, habits. Um, you know, for, like I, I really genuinely believe that it, it, you, have to, you have to change your belief system one. And I take people through an actual, like, my own system of how to actually really pinpoint what are your old beliefs, then how do you pinpoint where those beliefs stem from and how do you create new beliefs in your life of what's possible? And then once you change your belief system, it's about changing your habits. And for me, it's like mastering my morning routine is really important. That energizes me. You know, every morning, making my bed, taking a cold shower, meditating, I, journaling has changed my life. Even if you think that you can't like, you know, uh, you know, you're like, I don't know what to write. Just by putting pen to the paper every morning before you grab your phone and starting to, after meditating, writing out, what are your goals? You know, what comes to mind? Like, what's your vision? What do you want to accomplish? Or it could be anything at all. But journaling, I think, it has really helped me um, significantly. And then um, just exercising, realizing that my body is a temple. So I always just try to, every, every morning, to, um, take care of my body. I just exercise, meditate, journal, take a cold shower to, like, wake me up. And then, ultimately, you got to just look into, you got you to gotta get clear on your purpose, I think that's the ultimate motivation is like, why are you going, why are you mastering, you know, all, you know, your life? Why do you want to actually um, wake up and, and, you know, work shouldn't be something that you dread. Work should be something that you love because you love doing it. And the only way for you to be ultimately motivated is to love what you do, is to be passionate about what you're doing. So it's getting very clear on what it is that if you're unhappy about what you're doing in life, then reevaluate. You know, maybe it's time for you to do, make a radical shift and change and get clear on what is your purpose in life? What is it that, you, that actually will excite you? Because you can have all the habits in the world, but if you don't have your purpose aligned, you know, you know then, then it's really difficult. You'll burn out. You'll be working and you'll be hustling and you'll be do, being busy. You'll be hustling, 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 grinding away. And sometimes you'll even make money, but you won't be happy. Mm. So it's really important for you to get clear on your purpose. You mentioned changing your belief systems. I mean, you've done this over and over and over again with so many people you've trained to become leaders. What would you say is one of the most important belief systems that a leader needs to make in order to become that leader that they want to be? Oh, man, that's hard. There's so many. This is really fun when you think about your beliefs. I think this is something that everybody should consistently look into at all different points in your life. New levels, new devils like you're going to your belief system is always going to change people. You don't think about like the fact that billionaires have problems, too. You know, they're, as they grow, they're, there's new problems, there's new things, there's new ways that they got to change their mind. Oop, I dropped my earphones. Going through new levels and new problems and change their mindset. So to answer your question, I, first of all, I would tell you, there's like 15 different beliefs that I make people go through. Your belief on love, your belief on money, your belief on success, abundance, health. And I can go on and on. Sex. There's so many things that you can look, look at. What are your beliefs on these things? And then really pinpoint what were your old beliefs? A lot of the problems that our beliefs stem from childhood. It could be your family, your mom, your dad. They, they got divorced. You saw some cheating. You, got, you went through some kind of trauma in your life. And it started making you believe. And the big one that I would tell you is think about what does success mean to you? A lot of us when we're young, success is correlated to materialistic things. Success is a, a belief you may have is that it's not for everyone, for instance, right? That money doesn't grow on trees. Like money is hard to come by. And, you know, you have maybe a little bit of this like doubt or scarcity mindset belief that that's it may not be for you, this ultimate success. And that's not true. So pinpoint where did that belief stem from? Where did you when did you start first start believing 
that like success may be, you know, uh, it, it, it may not be for you that it's, you know, it's maybe it's that it's just about money. It's not really about fulfillment. It's just about, you know, materialistic things. You know, it's just about, you know, having the exotic cars and all that stuff and all that stuff is great. But what does success really mean to you and create a new belief as to what success means to you? You know, for me, it's empowering others. It's creating leaders. It's right. leaving, it's leaving a legacy. It's helping solve real world problems like the education system. It's help. It's helping to uh, understand, teach people how to become a powerful, influential leader and coach and brand. And for me, success is different now. I've had millions of dollars and I still was unhappy. Of course, I want more money. But success for me is the, the actual amount of people that will show up when I'm no longer here. The people that will remember my words and that it inspired them to actually go out and make their dreams a reality. It's how many lives I can actually touch. So I think just re thank you, thank you. <laughs> you got some fans that <laughs> people are walking by like, yeah, keep going, keep going. <laughs> it, yeah, you're bringing, so. you're raising the vibration, man. It's amazing. So. Um, dude, it's crazy how quickly time flies when you're having fun. Uh, yeah. People who, who are from my audience who want to dive deeper into your world, like I love, I like what this guy's saying. Where do you want them to go next? Like, what's the best first point into your world? I appreciate it. Um, well, you know, Evan, I look forward to collaborating with you more. Thank you for giving me this time. Um, for me, if this resonated with you, I would tell people just go to my Instagram page. I just commented it. Um, shoot me a DM and let's let's have a conversation. And like, you know, right now what I'm trying to do is just is help people overcome, you know, that the whatever's holding you back from owning your story. You know, especially people that feel a calling to go out there and become a powerful coach and help people get through certain challenges. Um, you know, for me, I'm trying to te really help them to, to understand what it means to become influential. So uh, if, you're, if this interests you, if you guys, or if you just want some mentorship, you, you have a, something you're going through and, and you kind of want to ask me any questions, just shoot me a DM and, you know, I try to go through all my DMs, so. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for the love, the energy. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more together and, and uh, have a great rest of the week, man. Thank you for all the love you shared. You too, bro. Get better. Okay. Thank you, man. Take care. If you like this video, check out the interview I did with Tom Bilyeu. I think you really enjoyed. The link is right there next to me. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. What are you doing? You're not answering the question I'm asking. I felt so hopeless and so lost and just unsure of how I was going to make anything in my life.